Okay, so that was his 36th point, which broke the record, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record, the all-time points scorer in the NBA. What does it mean exactly? Ian Thompson joins us again. We thank you so much for your time, Ian. The soul of basketball also worked for ESPNNBA.com as well. It's done now. So, big breath, sigh of relief. I mean, what kind of perspective do you immediately put on it? Yeah, it's something that no one ever thought we'd see, actually. So, yeah, it is it is good that it's um, it's done. And he made quick work of it, didn't he? He's, he's scoring all these points in his age at the end. It was like he was in a really real hurry to do something that he hadn't planned on doing from the beginning. It's, it's also – there's a bizarre element to it that I don't see in any other sports where, you know, the stage stops, doesn't it? The game actually stops. And, and at the moment, it's actually celebrated on court. Um Hey, it's kind of quirky, but it's kind of cool as well because it's one of those historical things that, as you say, may not happen again in our lifetime. So, are you do you do you approve of that aspect of it? I mean, that shows what sports are over here, right? It's a it's a business. It's an entertainment industry. It's um, it's marketed towards uh, people who aren't necessarily sports fans. That's how the the money's gone up as much as it has over the last several decades. So, yeah, it's. They, they stop games all the time now for things that you would not have imagined being worthwhile of stopping them, but they do. This one was worth it. This was, this was uh, a culmination of a guy that we've been watching grow up since he was 15 or 16. And when I say we, I mean all sports fans across America have been aware of LeBron since he was a 16-year-old. Um, you know, two years before he made the NBA. And um, no one saw him as a scorer when he came into the NBA. He was supposed to be Magic Johnson more than Michael Jordan. And now, almost as an afterthought, he's turned out to be a better scorer than anybody. How big an achievement is this in terms of the NBA, in terms of the records in the NBA that people want to have? like the most rings, you know, the most championship. I mean, you know, so where does the highest point score sit in all of that? Well, the, the saving grace of the NBA, what really gives it its legitimacy is that championships are what matters. And that goes back to the 1960s and Bill Russell against Wilt Chamberlain. And they were the yin and the yang of basketball. And, and th- those were early days for the NBA. And the, the league could have gone either way. It could have been, a league that um, that um, uh, made a, a priority of individual statistics, and individual dominance, in which case they would have been glorifying Wilt Chamberlain as the best player. Bill Russell is the one that established that you have to win championships to be a, a great player in the NBA um, by way of beating Wilt Chamberlain just about every time they met in important games. He did that. And so now... Uh, to this day in this league, um, you can't be a great player unless you win championships. So Michael Jordan's six championships, Bill Russell's 11 championships, albeit in a different era, those are the big things in the NBA. Um, If you're talking about individual achievement, uh, Wilt Chamberlain once scored 100 points in the game. That's probably the single biggest individual record. And then this is this is right behind it. This is this is one of those records that's so far out of reach for everybody that no one ever really talked about it. No one no one imagined that Kareem Abdul Jabbar would would be surpassed as far as career points. So for LeBron to have done it, he's sort of raising an issue that people weren't talking about just because it seemed out of reach. Ian Thompson, this is Solar Basketball, the book the man's written, and he's worked for NBA, he's worked for ESPN, Sports Center. And Ian, do you have to be a certain kind of person? And because you've got to be healthy, you've, you, you know, I look at Kareem and what a great person he is. And that's why I'm asking you this question because to play for 20 years, to, to keep your body in that shape, to, to not go off the rails at any time, to not be, you know, succumb to the temptations of having hundreds of millions of dollars in your bank account, all that kind of thing. So to achieve a record like this, you know, you can win some NBA titles. I'm not throwing that off, of course, but you win NBA titles as part of a team and and you can be, you know, a, 
a bit of a rat bag if you want to be. But to achieve a record like this, you've got to live a kind of a lifestyle, don't you? You've got to be that kind of person. Is that is that true? Oh, I completely agree. And what sets these guys apart is the more successful they are, the harder they work. So I would imagine that LeBron's age, for him to be playing as well as he is, he is working harder at it now than he ever did when he was younger. And it goes against the whole principle of uh, enjoying what you've earned. (laughs) You know, like you think somebody that's made as much money as he has and had as much success as he's had. Okay, now you can take it easy and the business kind of runs itself, right? Well, no, he he's working harder at it now which means he's probably one of the hardest working players in the league, one of the most focused players in the league on top of being the best player in the league and the most accomplished. So that's, um, that alone is really inspiring. I think if, if people, if you think about it in those terms, uh, you know, and you try to apply lessons from what you see to your own life, that's, that's really something that, you know, there were always these stories about Kobe Bryant um, when he showed up to play in the Olympics for the first time. And he was the older player on the team and he just opened up the eyes of his teammates that, you know, he'd be down in the hotel gym at five in the morning or four in the morning or whatever preposterous time in the morning it was. And they thought they were doing great game down there at six 30 in the morning and he's already kicking their butt and he's won more championships than they have. So that that's, that's sort of the secret to success in sports. I think that instead of taking things for granted, the more you win, the more precious it gets and the more, the harder you're willing to work to keep it going. Yeah, because I was thinking, you know, along the lines of Tom Brady retiring as well. I mean, you know, here's a guy that everything you sort of see about him, he just seems like a like a, a decent man as well. And how look, I mean, it just is a blessing for the NBA, isn't it? Uh, you look at, you know, the same week we've had the news about Kyrie and as brilliant a player he is. I mean, the baggage that he brings and the just the impossibility of knowing, you know, is he going to stay next week? Is he going to play next week? And yet, you know, the consistency of somebody like LeBron, the consistency of somebody like Tom. I just think it's a really cool thing, isn't it? It is. It is. I'm always hesitant to say that um, we know somebody to be a good guy or a good person. Ever since uh, the truth came out about O.J. Simpson, it's, I'm not saying everybody's like O.J. Simpson, but there's a there's a uh, there's a warning sign there to to not go too far. But these are guys that sell themselves, that that uh, portray themselves, and and consciously try to um, uh, embody values that we appreciate and like, you know? So I think that's really important for all of these leagues that, that you can believe in, in the people that you're cheering for. Um, uh, and I agree, it's really, really hard to do that with somebody like Kyrie Irving, but you need both sides of it. You need your heroes and your villains to make, make compelling theater. We thank you so much for your time as always. Um, and finally, how long does this celebration go on for? When do we get back to actually, okay, the Lakers, you're not even in the, in the, you know, in the playoff tournament yet. You know, you're under the 500. This is glorious and it's fantastic for LeBron and it's a fantastic achievement. How many days does this go on for before we get back to the business of the NBA? Oh, it goes on until LeBron retires now. I mean, then it's been going on before he set the record. Um, the record of his team and the success of the Lakers is irrelevant to the amount of coverage that he gets and the attention paid to him. Um, He is his own franchise, his own story. He's running in a lane all of his own. And um, people are, attention is going to be paid to him. I don't care if his team goes 10 and 72 next year. There is every night there's going to be a report on LeBron James and how he did and how he's doing. And look, this is not by accident. He did not fall into this. He earned this, you know, he's, he's been doing this so long at such a high level and he's taken stands on social causes and he's, he's uh, transcended the sport in many ways. And, and so he has, he's earned this um, adulation that he receives.